What we're going to be going over here is the financial statement presentation that is on our balance sheet on our income statement for deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. And for example, we're just going to be looking at two temporary differences that result in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. And for our first uh, temporary difference here, we're going to have excess tax depreciation over book depreciation. And then our second uh, temporary difference is we're going to have some rent received in advance here for our tax basis versus our book basis. And then for our example, we're going to have no beginning balances either in the deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability account. So let's just go down and look at our basic example here. And we're going to be looking at our tax accounting here. And we're just going to have three years laid out here, X1 through X3. So we'll just start out with our pre-tax financial income, what I'm showing here. And now we move down to the uh, tax liability here. This is where we're going to have excess depreciation expenses. And this is really a deferred tax liability. This is where we're taking the depreciation here in the current year here, but we won't be able to depreciate it in the future years here. It's going to actually be increasing our income here because we're not going to be able to uh, subtract out that depreciation expense. But I'm just showing this excess depreciation here over the three year period here where we have a cumulative amount. We have a 30,000 here for the first year. Everything is shown in thousands of dollars here. 40,000 the second year here and 20,000 in the third year. So this is where our deferred tax liability that is defined here by the future taxable amount times the future tax rate. And for our tax rate, we're just going to use 40% here over those three years here. So uh, for excess depreciation, you can see where it's going to be a future taxable amount. So because you're not going to be able to depreciate, let's say this 30,000 amount here in the subsequent years here, you're taking it all in this first year. And that would be the same for the next years here. Now looking at our next temporary difference, we're going to have this excess rent received here for our tax accounting basis. And now we're showing 20,000 here for first year, 10,000 second and 8,000 for the third year here. This is going to be a deferred tax asset. And that's the basis here or the base where you we take we pay the taxes on it here in the current year let's say this 20,000 here but we won't have to since we pay it in the current year here in the subsequent years we're not going to have to pay any tax on it so that is we paid it here in the current year here not going to have to pay it in the future year so that's called a deferred tax asset which is a future deductible amount so your deferred tax asset you just take your future deductible amount times the future tax rate here so again our tax rate is 40 percent so our taxable income let's just look at it here so we, we take out our pre-tax financial income, let's say for the first year, 840,000, subtract out our excess depreciation of 30,000, add back our excess rent received here, 20,000, total taxable net amount here, taxable income is 830,000. Take it times our, to determine our tax payable, just take it times the, in this case, that 40% tax rate here per year here, uh, 830,000 times that, gonna give you 330,000. 2000 here. So that's our tax payable for the first year. And do the same here for your second years here. Uh, tax payable second year 352000 and third year 374000 So the key thing is here, just remember with how you determine your deferred tax liabilities here. Uh, uh, when you have a reduction to your, uh, uh, for a tax accounting purposes here, it's going to be a future taxable amount out in the future. Take it times the future tax rate here to determine your tax liability. And then for your deferred tax asset here, when you recognize it as an income item here in the current year here, it's going to be a future deductible amount in the future. You won't have to pay taxes on it because you already had in the current period. So uh, deferred tax asset is really the future deductible amount here times the future tax rate. Okay, so before we do our, now let's go and we have to determine what, um, for our tax reporting here, we have to determine our taxes payable, our tax expense, and our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability. So starting with our tax payable here, that we calculated up above here for each of those years here. First year here uh, was 332,000. Uh, so you credit your tax payable liability account on your balance sheet by that amount. And then the next year we had 352,000 credit that tax payable for that. And then the last year here, 374,000 credit that. Okay, so we've taken care of our tax payable. Now we have to determine our deferred tax asset here. Let's start with our deferred tax asset. So all we're gonna do here is we'll, we'll look at that excess rent received here. 
uh, for each of those years here. So you deferred tax asset, uh, you take that deferred amount or that uh, temporary difference, what in this case the first year is 20,000 times your tax rate here, future tax rate, well, it's 40% for each of those years here. 20,000 times the 40%, you're gonna get a deferred tax asset here of 8,000 here. And then for the next years here, we've deferred tax as 4,000, 10,000 times 40%. And then the third year is 3,200 here, 8,000 times 40%. So we figured out our deferred tax asset. Now that's an asset account here on the balance sheet. Now let's go down and look at our deferred tax liability. That's done in the same fashion. You take whatever uh, that temporary difference, in this case it was that 30,000 here for the first year times 40%, gives us a credit or we increase our deferred tax liability by 12,000 here. And then next year we had that 40,000 uh, times 40%, 16,000, and then last year here, 20,000 times 40%, 8,000. Okay, so we've determined what our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability is here. Now, when we're doing our reporting here, this is what we wanna look at here. For a deferred tax asset, it's gonna be reported as a current asset, and we'll get into a further detail on that. Because the underlying asset that we're uh, determining that deferred tax asset on is a current asset. The rent received is current because it's less than one year. It's an asset considered less than one year here. It would be a current asset. And then for a deferred tax liability here, well, what is the underlying asset? It's gonna be a long-term liability because the underlying asset that it represents here, this deferred tax uh, uh, liability here is a long-term, it's a long-term asset, therefore it's gonna be a long-term deferred tax liability because the depreciation expense here is on a long-term asset. The asset's got a longer life, it's a greater life than one year here, therefore it's gonna be a long-term asset Therefore, it's gonna be a long-term liability. And then finally here, let's just move over to our tax expense here. So the, how you calculate your tax expense here based on what we've done here, it really becomes a plug or a balancing amount here between your tax payable, your deferred taxes, and your deferred tax liability. So let's just look at this first year how, we, year how we'd calculate it here. So we're gonna debit or increase our tax expense on our income statement, that's for our financial accounting here, by 336,000. So how do we get that? Well, we are gonna look, We this is how we take our tax payable here. We can look at it in these terms here, but our tax payable here for the year here was a credit amount of 332,000. And then our deferred tax liability, if we move down here, has a credit amount here of 12,000. So, uh, and then we move up here to, uh, so we those credits here would have to be added together. Now we move up to our deferred tax asset. Well, it has a debit amount here of 8,000. So uh, we need a balancing, the tax expense would be the balancing amount here, debit amount of 336,000. We can look at it down here where tax payable, a credit of 332,000, deferred tax liability, we had a credit here of 12,000, deferred tax asset here, debit, or we'd have debit amount here, so we subtract that here from those amounts here of 8,000. So the net amount here is gonna give you your tax expense of 336,000. Simply a plug here between your debits and credits here, between your tax payable, your deferred tax assets, and your deferred tax liability. So you just proceed on for each of the next years here in the same fashion. Just look at your credits here, all your credits, and then what's sitting in your debit amount here, and then you need a balancing, a debit here in your asset, then you need a balancing amount here in your tax expense. So, the, you're plugging the balance in here to determine your tax expense. Okay, so we've um, went through and we've determined our deferred tax asset, deferred tax liabilities, and also the tax payable and our tax expense. Now let's go in and look at how we do our reporting here. So let's look at, start with the income tax, first for our income statement here. And this is how you'd report the income tax expense section here on your income statement. And we're just gonna look at year 20X3 here. So this is how you'd break it down. You take your income before taxes here. That's your pre-tax income. And looking at 20X3, if you go up there, you're gonna see it was 947,000. Now you have to take out your income tax expense and you have to break it out between the current portion and the deferred portion. Now the current portion here is what we calculated as our tax payable and that for 
20x3, we determine that to be 374,000. Now the deferred portion, that's really the difference between our def deferred tax liability and our deferred tax asset account here. So our defer deferred tax liability for the year, we determine that to be 8,000 here. Our deferred tax asset, that was 3,200 here. So that's going to be a tax expense, only because our deferred tax liability here of 8,000 is greater than our deferred tax asset here of 3200 so we have to uh, that would be the deferred portion here and we have to increase our income tax expense by that amount of forty eight hundred dollars here so what we're now having this deferred portion here been different here say the deferred tax asset was eight thousand here and the deferred tax liability was thirty two hundred we'd really have a net tax benefit here so the difference here in that case the difference would be again forty eight hundred but it would be a reduction here in our uh, to our tax expense. We would be subtracting the 4800 from our current amount here of 374000 But in this case, our deferred tax liability was greater than deferred tax asset, so it becomes a tax expense here. So just uh, total up your current portion here, your deferred portion, and that's going to give you your total income tax expense for the year here. That was 378800 Subtract that here from the income before taxes of 947000 So your net income would be reported at $568,200. Just remember here, current portion here for your income tax expense is the tax payable that you calculated and the deferred portion is really whatever the balancing amounts between your deferred tax liability and your deferred tax asset. And I'm showing here, deferred tax liability was 8,000, deferred tax asset 3,200. So in this case, our deferred tax expense was increased here by $4,800. And then lastly, just to point out here, our, to calculate, calculate your effective tax rate, you simply take your income tax expense here, total amount 378800 divided by your income before taxes of 947000 here, and that's going to give your effective tax rate of 40%. Now, that's the same as what we were calculating, what we, we based everything on was that 40% tax rate. But if we had some, the difference here, if our, if we, our deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities, uh, had some beginning balances that affected this rate here, this uh, effective tax rate would either be greater than or less than that tax rate that we were working with. Okay, so nonetheless here, when you're working with your income, reporting it on your income statement, just remember you have to take your income tax expense, the current, determine what your current portion is, what your deferred portion, add those together here, and reduce your uh, pre-tax income by that amount to determine your net income. Okay, so we've taken care of our income statement here for these deferred taxes. All right, now let's go up and let's look at our balance sheet presentation. Now these are the general rules that we use here when you're uh, trying uh, on your balance sheet, the rules that you would work with here. So number one, if your temporary difference is caused by a current asset or a current liability, then the deferred tax asset account is current. That makes sense here. So what you're going to do here, let's just take, you take, what you would do here is you just take your, and for reporting purposes here, just take your current tax liability account, whatever, whatever amounts you have in your, for your current tax liabilities, and then you take, you net them against your turn, current tax asset account here. I'm just saying, just showing them here, what they may be different here, but just generally speaking here, your turn current tax asset as a tax benefit, it would reduce your current tax liability by whatever amount it is here. Uh, net the amounts here and then you're going to come up with the net current amount. That's what would be reported here for your current tax assets and your current tax liabilities. And again, that's what you'd report here and you would disclose in detail in your financial statements what these tax liabilities and what these current tax liabilities and current tax assets would be here. And when we're speaking of current, we mean that uh, these assets and liability of the related accounts would be less than one year here. They'd, the underlying asset and, li uh, asset and liability accounts would be uh, less than one year here, the related assets. Okay, and then number two here, if the temporary difference is caused by a non-current asset or a non-current liability, then the deferred tax account is non-current. That is, greater, these asset and liability accounts are greater than 
one year here. Okay, so again, go through the same procedure here. Just take all your non-current tax liabilities here, determine what they are here, then take your non-current tax asset here, I'll call it a tax benefit, and just for our case here, the tax asset here, again, would be reducing our tax liability here. And just net those amounts, and then you're going to come up with the net current amount, and that's what would be, re be reported here, whatever the net current amount is. Again, disclose in detail in the financial statements what these non-current tax uh, liabilities and non-current tax assets are. So you get the idea here. When you're working with your balance sheet, just remember you have to uh, break them down here, your deferred tax accounts between the current amount here and the non-current amount for both the tax assets and the tax liabilities for reporting purposes. Now let's just go back to our little example here. So we do, well, all we had was that deferred tax asset here and our deferred tax liability. And let's just look here, reported here for year 20X3. That was that last year here. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to net these deferred amounts here. Total amounts, which we're running here. If we had any reversals or we didn't have any beginning balance and the reversals of these uh, tax asset and tax liability accounts would have been included in, in our amounts here. So for a deferred tax asset, I'm just taking the debits amount here, debit everything up. Your deferred tax asset for 20X3 would be your total amount here, 15,200 that would be reported. And then moving over to deferred tax liability, same thing. You just take your credits here, whatever they would be, a, a total amount here for the uh, three years here. Well, for 20X3, it we reported at 36,000 here. But the key point is here, when you're reporting these here, the deferred tax asset, in this case, it's a current asset because the rent received, the related asset is current here. It's less than a year here. This rent, rent received would be uh, less, an asset would be considered less than a year here. So it would, this current deferred tax asset would be reported as a current asset on the balance sheet. And then moving over to our deferred tax liability that was a would be reported under a long-term liability on the balance sheet here that was the, the depreciation expense here that resulted for this de deferred tax liability because the related asset would be non-current here that is for our depreciation expense we'd be depreciating an asset that had greater than a year's life in this case it was let's just say three, four, five years, whatever it is. So it, it, the, the asset here that we're depreciating was a long-term asset. Therefore, the deferred tax liability would be a long-term liability. Again, related to asset, non-current. Just remember here, current assets uh, for your deferred tax assets here are related to assets that are current here and long-term liabilities here uh, for your deferred tax liabilities are related to assets that are non-current. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion here for uh, uh, financial statement presentation for these deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities and basically how we'd handle them.